Hey ma'am fam, we are here at Disney Springs ready for a multi-course meal. The trick is we don't know where we're going for any of these courses and we're going to leave it up to chance. There is a ton to eat at Disney Springs. Dozens of restaurants, cult favorite dessert spots, James Beard award-winning signature restaurants. I really hope I'm in charge for appetizer round. I want dessert. It's going to be delicious no matter what. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm hungry. Let's go. Let's do it. The way this is going to work is that we are going to be having a six course meal today. And before each one of those courses, we are going to duke it out grade school style by playing a round of rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins decides where we're going and what we're eating at that restaurant. We have no reservations and nothing booked at all. So you're also going to pick up some tips and tricks for how to get into some of these restaurants without anything booked. In between courses, we may pop into some of our favorite shops, do a little browsing. I've got my eye on a pair of ears I hope we can find. So it's going to be a fun day overall. Course one, drinks. Now we're going rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or rock, paper, scissors? We go on shoot. We go on shoot. Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Nice. All right, I'm thinking of what I want to drink. All right, I got a cocktail in mind. Let's go. All right. Ready? ready? Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Got some drinks. <laughs> All right, where are we getting drinks? We have a lot of options. Uh, we go to Jock Lindsay's, Wine Bar George, The Polite Pig, they have a great bourbon bar, Frontier Casino, The Edison. The Edison's not good. Polite Pig, I wanna go to a bourbon bar. Polite Pig bourbon bar, interesting choice. Right, well, The Edison is nice. It's some good craft cocktails with a steampunk vibe, but wasn't really feeling that right now. Then you have Wine Bar George, which has an excellent wine selection and some really nice curated cocktails as well. I do love Wine Bar George. I went there recently for the cheese video. Mm, it's one of my favorite restaurants on property. But I agree, wine's a little boring. Yeah. And we have Jock Lindsay's, which I've been to a lot. So I don't necessarily want to go back there right now. But I've actually not been to the Polite Pig Bourbon Bar. And I love bourbon. That is shocking to me. I guess we're normally eating at the Polite Pig versus sitting and having a cocktail. But yeah, there's tons of great places to get drinks. We could have also done Frontera Cocina, as you mentioned, which is a Mexican restaurant and has the same beverage team as the Mexico Pavilion and Epcot, so you know their cocktails are great. And if you're into craft beer, you could also go to City Works, which has dozens of craft beer on tap. So that's always a good option. I was just feeling some bourbon. The Polite Pig is brought to you by local celebs and James Beard Award nominees James and Julie Petrakis. It is fantastic barbecue. For sure the best barbecue in Walt Disney World. I'm talking delicious brisket and ribs and smoked chicken and salmon. They have all kinds of sides that are amazing. My favorite are the maple bourbon Brussels sprouts. They also do sandwiches, wings. They have rotating seasonal sides. Uh, but as Alan pointed out, they do also have a bourbon bar. They are known for their bourbons. They've got dozens of them that you can get in various cocktails as well as just try samplings and small pours. So this is where we're going to be getting a cocktail today. Now this is a quick service restaurant, although it may not seem like it. You are going to uh, wait in line, order at the counter, and then the cast members will bring you anything that you need. If once you're seated, you'd like to add another drink, you're missing anything, you need more of one of their signature sauces, there are cast members that float around and uh, serve you that way. So it's kind of a mix. It's kind of a hybrid between a sit down um, and a quick service restaurant. But there's also a bar that you can walk up and order just beverages right at the bar without having to wait in the food line. As you can see, the Blight Pig has dozens of bourbons and whiskeys available for you. Uh, you'll notice these red boxes around some of the whiskeys listed here, and that is something that is made specifically for the Polite Pig that you can't find anywhere else. It should be noted that the prices for these whiskeys are for a pour of that whiskey. If you'd like it to be a cocktail, it is an additional $2 charge to have that in a cocktail. And if you're not a bourbon whiskey drinker, but you'd still like to visit the Polite Pig, they also have a selection of their own beers. The Ravenous Pig is the Polite Pig's sister restaurant in Winter Park, Florida. So all of these beers uh, listed here are made for them. That's their craft brewery. You can pick one or you can do a flight. So a lot to drink here at Polite Pig. And I feel like almost underrated at this point from a beverage aspect. Our cocktails have arrived in a shocking twist of event that no one could see coming. I am drinking an Old Fashioned. Never gonna see it. And I am drinking it with the Buffalo Trace Select Bourbon that is uh, bottled exclusively for Polite Pig. I just asked for a classic Old Fashioned. I asked her how sweet it was. She said they can tend to be sweet, so she uh, went light on the simple syrup mixture, but I'm really excited to try that. And I went with something a little bit different. Rather than my normal Old Fashioned, I went with a Manhattan with the Whistlepig 10-year rye. 
they actually went very, very light on the vermouth, which I am happy about, and I'm very much looking forward to this. Again, the Whistle Pig Tin Rye is exclusively made for the Polite Pig, so looking forward to it. It's a phenomenal old fashioned. I would say one of the best I've had on property. I am glad I asked her to go light on the mixture because it does have uh, simple syrup and those aromatic bitters, so it would get a little bit too sweet. It's definitely very bourbon forward. That bourbon is hitting you in the face right when you drink it, but it's not burning the back of my throat. It's tempered really nicely with the uh, what it's being mixed with. A phenomenal old fashioned. And as a bourbon drinker, I love that there's a whole bar here to choose from and you can mix and match and kind of create your own adventure. You can certainly tell that this Manhattan is made with rye whiskey. It's significantly spicier than what you get from normal bourbon. A little bit more fruity taste. Um, you can barely taste the vermouth, and it mostly lets the whiskey shine, and that's exactly what I want it to be. Excellent, excellent Manhattan. You made a great selection for drinks, but I have a feeling I got apps in the bag. All right, All right it's time for appetizers. On shoot, right? Yeah. Right. Ready? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Two for two. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel Max's pain <laughs> from the other video where we did this at the park. It's, okay, it's only the first two. It, it could easily. Where are we going? So Jocks is a great charcuterie board with the pretzel. Oh, I do like that. Uh, Wine Bar George has the flaming cheese. I like that too. I think Homecoming though. They have the biscuits. And they're amazing. He's fallen right into my trap. That's what I wanted anyway. So, it's all good. As someone who could exclusively eat apps and zerts for the rest of their life, mm -hmm. appetizers, hortivores, whatever you want to call them, munchies, tasties. Can I get apps and zerts? They're my favorite course. So, there's a lot of good stuff you can have around here, like Wine Bar George, and Alan mentioned the fire cheese, which I had in that cheese video recently. They also have an amazing burrata, mac and cheese bites, charcuterie boards. Speaking of charcuterie boards, you have Jock Lindsay's, which has maybe my second favorite charcuterie board. Okay, maybe we just do a charcuterie board throwdown. What's your first favorite charcuterie board if Jock's is number two? Well, I don't want to spoil. Okay, fine. Maybe we will do a charcuterie board throwdown. Nothing would make me happier. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got Frontera Cocina, that, that amazing queso fundido. There is, I mean, if you just wanted to eat munchies, you, you could do it all day long here. As a reminder, we would like to go to Homecoming on a busy Sunday afternoon, and we don't have a reservation, so we are really hoping that we'll have a spot at the bar where things are going to be awkward. <laughs> My tried and true tip worked. There were a few seats available at the bar, so we went ahead and snagged them. You can order the full menu off the bar, um, and this is something I do a lot as a smaller party of one or two. You can usually grab bar seating at a lot of the popular restaurants here, Boathouse, uh, Frontera Cocina, without a reservation. It's of course trickier if you are a bigger party, but if you're one or two, you usually don't have to wait too long for a spot. Homecoming is brought to you by James Beard award-winning Chef Art Smith, who is Oprah's personal chef for over a decade. His menu is Southern comfort food. I'm talking his famous fried chicken, famous biscuits, sides like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese, squash casserole. They also have a phenomenal brunch here. This is one of my favorite restaurants in all of Walt Disney World, and the apps are all amazing. Alan, what are we getting? We're gonna be getting the thigh high chicken biscuits because is there anything more southern than that? That's what I wanted. Oh, good. That's what I wanted too. Homecoming would have also been a good spot to stop for cocktails because they have great house made moonshine like the Blue Hooch and the Sweet Tea Shine. You can get those poured into 16 ounce cocktails for $15, or if you'd like, you can buy a 22 ounce jumbo squeeze for $22 and then get that refilled for $15 every time you come back. So it's really a steal. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have one of those though. Here they are, Chef Art Smith's thigh high chicken biscuits. These are one of my top five favorite Disney foods. They're his famous fried chicken atop his famous cheddar drop biscuits. There's some house-made pickles and hot honey on these babies. I'm literally drooling right now. I cannot wait to eat these. Chef Art Smith Fried Chicken, 
second to none. It is so moist. I'm sorry, freezing moist, but I'm not. It's worth it right here. They never freeze it. It's from local farms. They have a signature blend of spices and herbs, and it's like perfectly fried, so it's got that crispy exterior and that nice, juicy interior, plus the hot honey on there. It's just a little zest. Not to mention that biscuit, because for me, Southern knows you want a nice crust on the exterior, flaky, buttery interior that almost sort of gives way. So the jalapeno and the cheddar and the drop biscuit counteracts all of that beautifully. You good? Oh, that was just so delicious. Ooh. So tasty. And I will gush about homecoming all day. One of the reasons the food is so amazing is they are part of a Florida Growers Association, which means if they're able to, everything they bring into the restaurant is grown within 100 miles of Disney Springs. So they're supporting local farmers. Everything's fresh and delicious, and you can taste it in their cuisine. Huh. Well, they were delicious biscuits. Yes. Would you like to take a quick jaunt around World of Disney to make some stomach space? You know I would, because you know what? There's new ears I'm on the lookout for. Of course there are. <laughs> of course there are. On our trip to Walt Disney, we are walking into the Marketplace, which is one of the many neighborhoods you can find in Disney Springs. In fact, the Marketplace is one of the most unchanged neighborhoods from the transition from downtown Disney to Disney Springs. We were just in town center at homecoming. The landing is over by Wine Bar George and Jack Lindsay's Hangar Bar and the Boathouse. And then the west side is by Cirque du Soleil, Haleo, Splitsville, etc. Do you want to know one of my life's greatest regrets? Absolutely. So this sea serpent Lego. Who has it, remained unchanged and a staunch addition for years. She's beautiful. I love her. They used to have a Lego kit of her. And it was one of the only exclusive things to the Lego store here, because everything else you could buy on lego.com. And they had it during my college program, and I thought about buying it and I didn't. And I really regret not buying Sea Serpent Lego set. World of Disney might have undergone a number of changes on the interior throughout the years, but one fact remains. And that is that it is the largest merchandise shop on Walt Disney World property. While in the theme parks, the Emporium might be the largest merchandise shop, followed by what was once Mouse Gear, which is where I did my college program, World of Disney has always maintained the top spot. It's always this overwhelming. To the ear wall! And as Molly runs away towards the ear wall, some of you might remember when World of Disney was less open concept than it is today. It was actually fairly closed off and in closed quarters, and you had a number of distinct sections that you'd have to navigate through. That's the merchandise world that I remember when I worked for the Disney company years ago, aeons ago, as a cast member in merchandise starting on my college program. Today, it is much more open concept, and that has actually led to it increasing the amount of square footage available within the shop itself. And for those of you still watching and tracking, you will see... The glittery ears now have found their home. And here we see an influencer. But rather than prey, what she stalks is in fact a new set of ears. Not just any ears. These are ears to replicate the look of one mini mouse. Continuing to stalk, she finds herself somewhat disappointed. It would seem that the desired prey is not available. That's very sad. I'm so sorry. Listen, I love the Haunted Mansion as much as the next person, but do I love it enough to get a Haunted Mansion puffy jacket? I weirdly love this. It's got the grave diggers and the ballroom dancers and the Constance the Bride. It's got the grave digger right here. The portraits. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. If I didn't live in Florida, that would be mine. Alan, do you see the shirt? There are two types of people. I do. Which one are you? Epcot. You're an Epcot kind of guy. Yeah. I, I'm an Animal Kingdom kind of girl, and I'm I'm upset that well, that's I'm not sorry. an option. Well, really, what we're learning is that there are only two types of people. No, I'm I'm type three, Animal Kingdom. I understand, but according to the shirt, there are only two types of people. 
I don't like it. I'm just so upset because they were like black and they had a bow, but the, the bow was like cattywampus off to the side, which I know I have other black ears, but black just goes such a thing as having too many black ears. I also own way too many little black dresses, but it's better to have solid colors, so then you're I love wearing shirts with patterns and prints, but unique because it was all black, but the bow was like cattywampus. Cattywampus. And I'm just really sad I haven't seen them in the parks yet, you know? Anyway. We're back in the same spot, but I feel good. I feel good about this one. Entree time. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Three for three. <laughs> I keep picking. I keep picking what you had last time, thinking you would pick it again, because like you would win again. So I'm like, I'm gonna beat him at his own game. All right, you win again. Where are we having our entree? So my personal favorite is Morimoto, but it's kind of hot outside for soup. We could also do the Four Rivers food truck, but again, that's outside, and I don't know if I want a brisket cone. Deluxe burger? We just had biscuits that's kind of heavy. Haleo. Haleo? Haleo. Tapas? Yes. More apps, essentially? 100%. I'm very on board with this plan. Let's do it. Let's go. I thought for sure we were eating deluxe burger, so I'm tickled to eat at Kaleo. Oh no, what's happening? I'm cutting through Uniqlo. Look at the collection. It's got little animals on it. How can I not? Uniqlo is a Japanese department store that is clearly set up shot here in Disney Springs. They have the cutest Disney t-shirts, and they're usually much less expensive than buying actual Disney store sweatshirts and t-shirts, so I love popping in here and seeing what they've got. And as my extra pro tip, if you come back to the back here, you can get shirts on sale. I'm talking like six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh. They're, are you joking me right now? Are you joking me? What's the biggest size? This is a kid's shirt, so we got to go for the biggest size. It's from the Smithsonian collab, and it's on sale for $7. So we got a shirt. We have made it to the West Side neighborhood and to Haleo, which is a Spanish tapas style restaurant with the James Beard award-winning chef, Jose Andres. And I, for one, am thrilled to be here. I'm so excited you picked Haleo because I love tapas. It's basically just an excuse to eat appetizers for your entree. I also think this is a phenomenal restaurant and it's underrated at this point because the food and the service is so. And apparently they also do brunch. They do brunch. We should do brunch. Haleo is an absolutely stunning restaurant, and I'm happy to see several patrons in here enjoying some brunch lunch today on a Sunday. Um, just like other places, if you don't have a reservation, bar seating is first come, first serve, and they do sell the whole menu. So we're going to go ahead and grab a seat right here. I love this restaurant. I love the aesthetic in this restaurant. Make sure you check out the open concept kitchen where they're making the paella. Of course, being a Spanish restaurant, they are very known for their paellas. They usually have two different ones a night going, and whenever it's ready, they ding a bell and everybody shouts paella. They also have a bull and a luchador Mexican wrestler mask. That is a tradition in all of Jose Andres' restaurants. He has a bull in the wrestler mask, so that's a fun little touch too. And not to be weird, but if you come here, go to the bathrooms. They're adorable. Taking a look at the Haleo menu, they have, of course, course, a bunch of great cocktails. They are known for their sangrias, and if you get a picture of it, they'll do it table side for you. They've got white, red, and sparkling. Uh, but the joy of coming to Haleo is that it's a tapas restaurant, so it's going to be mostly a bunch of small plates, so you can try a little bit of everything. They are known for their cured meats. They have a variety of ha uh, jamón iberico, which is that legendary acorn-fed pigs of Spain. They have a bunch of different cheeses. You can kind of do a create-your-own-adventure tale there. They also have a variety of soup, salads, vegetable dishes, some seafood dishes. They uh, uh, the team here is wonderful and they'll definitely point you in the way of their signature items. They have some heavier dishes as well if you want to do like steak or grilled pork. Of course, they've got paella and then a few desserts. So this is a really fun restaurant, especially if you're a foodie or an older crowd, girls night, date night, honeymoon, looking for something a little bit unique, a little bit more exciting than traditional Disney food, you will likely find it here at Haleo. The food has arrived. The pan con tomate are some toasted slices of crispy bread brushed with fresh tomato. And you can also see that lovely manchego cheese on the top. Here we have the croquetas de pollo. These are some amazing chicken fritters that are Chef Jose Andres' grandmother's recipe. They told us it takes three days to make these fritters. 
It will take significantly less time for me to devour them. In true tapas style, our third dish has arrived. It comes as it's ready, uh, but couldn't resist getting some of the famous cured meats. This is salchichon iberaco de Beleta. That's... That's a good try. This is the salchichon iberaco de Beleta, which is as good as I can pronounce it. It is the famous iberaco pigs that for the last 24 months only eat the black acorns in Spain. It is incredibly delicious. This is the sausage version of that. They also do a chorizo version. They also do um, a ham version of it. Kind of a make your own adventure tale. And for our fourth tapa, this is the recommended amount for two people having a meal. But the great thing about tapas is you can always add more. Uh, but this is one of my favorites. It's an endive leaf with goat cheese, oranges, and almonds. It looks amazing. Look at this beautiful feast we are about to enjoy. Great choice on the entree. Thank you. If you've watched me do food reviews, you know my favorite thing is simple deliciousness, where it's just a simple dish, but it's high quality ingredients, and it does not get better than this. This manchego cheese, it's a sheep's milk cheese. It's got that amazing nuttiness. It's delicious. But you've also got this crispy bread with this fresh tomato uh, brush on there. It's adding a little bit of sweetness to it. This is a simple, simple, amazing dish, and I love that you can add the manchego to it. I'm going to put some of that ham on here. Be living my best life. I forgot how phenomenal these are. They are so rich with such depth of chickeny flavor. It's almost, and this is, this does them an injustice, but the best way I can describe it is almost like a casserole or like soup style texture that has been fried. But the flavor profile of this is just so rich. It's just so deep and chickeny. I just, uh, I'm going to stop talking and eat them. So the Sochichoni Berico is phenomenal. There is enough fat, but it's not fatty very tender, and there's almost a spicy nuttiness to it. Texturally, phenomenal. Bottom to top, amazing. These are a secret hit for me at Haleo. Of course, I'm gonna like the mean cheese plate, but I love these little endive boats. Um, you get a little bit of acidity from the oranges on there. You get salty and nuttiness from the goat cheese, and then the endive adds a little bit of crunch. It is just something, again, simple, delicious. It's like three ingredients, but together they're amazing and perfect. And I love these kind of meals where you just kind of mix and match, try a little bit of everything. If you want more, get a paella. If you want more, get another dish. Get the shrimp. They're amazing here too. But this is a really awesome restaurant for your foodies, for your adults, for your more adventurous eaters. Okay, that was a lot of food. I'm so full. Paleo also has a tasting menu that costs about $95, and that is enough food for two people. However, you could also do what we did, and that's pick a couple of tapas that you really want to try. Yeah, that tasting course is a six-course meal, which sounds amazing, but we're already having a six-course meal today, so we oh. <laughs> may have to come back for that one. <laughs> so before dessert, yeah. want to wander a bit? I would love to wander. I need Let's to make room. Yes. We away. I have an idea. Let's hear it. Let's go into Marvel Superhero Headquarters or the Star Wars Galactic Outpost and see how many characters we can find. Well, if it's Star Wars, you're at a distinct disadvantage. I think we have an equal footing in Marvel. That's true. I only know three Star Wars characters. Some by their real names. Okay, so what are the rules? Here's the rules of the game. We have to find as many different characters as we can, but only merchandise. Store accents like these posters up here don't count. It has to be merchandise. Understood. No repeats, and you have to know the official name of the character. The merchandise can only have one character, otherwise we're going to be in here all day. I understand what you're saying, because otherwise this mug is like 12 people all in one. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So I've won the majority of the Rock, Paper, Scissors. I think you should kick us off. Ah. Pity. Groot. Loki. Doctor Strange. Lady Thor. Incredible Hulk. An incredibly depressing child shirt of the snapping Thanos. Oh, that's the scariest Halloween shirt I've ever seen. Mmm, ghosts. Spider-Man slash Peter Parker. Oh, two for one. America Chavez. I am Iron Man. Black Panther. It's America Chavez. No, it's not. It's Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Zombie Captain America. Now, does that count as Cap or is that a different Cap? Is that different? No, it's Cap. Okay, so Cap. Just undead. Well, hey, y'all. It's Miss Minutes. Not Lady Thor. Does this count? I already got Loki earlier. I know, but it's Gator Loki. You know what? For Irrelevant, you... Irrelevant? Can I have it? It's 55 minutes. <laughs> I won't do it, Gator Loki, but I am going to count Pizza Dog. Yes, we love Pizza Dog. King Valkyrie. 
very scary and said cool. My well, main man, Oscar Isaac. Oh. Moon Knight. Yeah. Rocket. Ant Man. Okay. Captain Marvel. The Scarlet Witch. Somebody new. There's 10,000 Marvel characters. Nothing Black Widow? Are we serious? I'm about to win. I finally found one of everyone's favorite characters. I've been looking for her everywhere. I'm so glad she's here. Sarah from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh huh. She's my favorite. Your favorite? And it's definitely the same as finding Black Widow, who I was looking for. Congratulations. We did it. Okay. Tell me, ready for some dessert? You got it? I have something in mind. All right. You ready? I'm going to win this time. On shoot. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> oh, let's do dessert. <laughs> I guess this video is now Alan's favorite things. <laughs> okay. If I was gonna be mean, I'd pick Everglades, but I'm not mean. We could also do Gideon's for a cookie, Sprinkles for a cupcake, Salt and Straw. I want Salt and Straw. I mean, Salt and Straw's fall menu has pumpkin ice cream on it, so I wanted that anyway, so it's working out for me fine, but like, how am I this bad at Rock, Paper, Scissors? <laughs> Salt and Straw is the latest in boutique desserts here in Disney Springs. It is a gourmet ice cream shop owned by Cousins. It started in Oregon and then it worked its way down the West Coast into California and it's been moving around the country ever since. They've had a Salt and Straw in the Disneyland downtown Disney district for a while, but this one opened up just a few months ago here in Disney Springs. It is absolutely amazing. Some of the best ice cream you'll ever eat. They are known for their storytelling through ice cream. So each of the flavors uh, are hand selected, hand chosen by one of those cousins. Um, he goes through hundreds of different taste samples to perfect each thing on the menu. And what I love about Salt and Straw is that they have their classics, they have their favorites year round, and then they rotate out a monthly menu. And on that monthly menu, they usually have some kind of theme. We're here in October, so it's ice cream, Halloween themed treats. They'll do Thanksgiving themed or Christmas themed during the holidays. They do a picnic basket during the summer. It's really, really fun. So there's always something new to try. I was lucky enough to come to the grand opening and I was able to talk to the owners. And one thing I love about them is again, the storytelling aspect. They talked about how they wanted to make chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, but they wanted it to be the best chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream in the world. So they met with all different kinds of bakers to create the perfect cookie dough to go into the perfect ice cream. When they were doing their caramel sea salt, they met with saltiliers, which is uh, like a mass, like a wine. It's a sommelier. They met that for salt to find the exact right salt they wanted in their sea salt ice cream. They do partnerships with like Black Panther to do a Black Panther coffee tres leches. Like their ice cream is, it's just amazing. And it's, it's unique. It's different. It is fabulous. So clearly I'm not mad we're here. I'm just mad that I'm terrible at rock, paper, scissors. One of the things I love about Salt and Straw is that you can try as many flavors as you want. Talk to the cast members in there. They're all trained to know everything about the ice cream flavors. They'll give you good descriptors, but they truly want you to try as many things as possible. And Alan, I think we should try this one. Sure. Matcha ice cream with toffee brittle mealworms and chocolate crickets, real bugs. So exciting. We're gonna try it. Okay. We tried a few flavors, including the bugs, which mostly tasted like matcha, but yeah. with a weird consistency. But what did you decide on? I decided on the salted malted chocolate chip cookie dough. Is it good? It is good. Oh yeah. Oh, right. I decided to be a culinary wizard and I went for the pumpkin bread and my other favorite which is the panther coffee tres leches. So basically it's like pumpkin coffee but in ice cream. Uh, okay. Massive chunks of cookie dough, lightly salted. The ice cream itself is incredibly creamy, texturally astounding. So much chocolate. Decadence and body. So very good. How's yours, boss? How's your ice cream? Oh, amazing. 
The pumpkin bread is incredible. I consider myself to be the utmost basic witch this time of year. I love everything pumpkin. You should see me at a Trader Joe's in the fall. This is one of the best pumpkin treats I've ever had because it's real pumpkin. It's not sugary sweet, artificial PSL at Starbucks pumpkin. It is like real pumpkin like the gourd. It's got all those autumnal spices like cinnamon and nutmeg, chunks of pumpkin bread in there, and then the ice cream itself is pumpkin as well. Plus, the Panther Coffee Trust Leches is the best coffee ice cream I've ever had. It's got a strong, strong coffee flavor, so you have to like coffee, obviously, but put together, it is like the best thing I've ever had. I love salt and straw so much. It is not overhyped. It seems like somewhere that'd be overhyped, but I promise you it's not. Okay, we're back. We're done eating. We have two more rounds, but it's drinks. You got this. Maybe I'll win one. You got this. I'm shoot. Ready? Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. All right, ready? Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. Two out of three, or? No. I get the cocktail. I need a cocktail. You okay? <laughs> okay. You know the cocktail selections. We're not gonna do Polite Pig twice. There's no double jeopardy here. We are going to go to Jock Lindsay's because it's a classic and there is something for everybody. I do enjoy Jock Lindsay's. Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar is a loosely Indiana Jones themed lounge. It's one of my favorites in Walt Disney World. They've got great drinks and great eats. If you remember from the original Indiana Jones film at the very beginning, as Indy's running out and he's yelling at his pilot, Jock, start the plane, Jock! Jock, start the engine! That is Jock Lindsay. This is his bar. So there's some cool Indiana Jones Easter eggs to look for inside. I love Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. Not only do they have great specialty cocktails, but they also have a wonderful happy hour as well as some amazing appetizers. Some of my personal favorites include the Club Obi-Wan Wings as well as the Air Pirates Cargo Loaded Pretzel. Both of those are incredible, and in the instance of the Air Pirates Cargo Loaded Pretzel, ooh, that's enough to serve at least two people, so go ahead and keep that on the docket. Some of my favorite beverages here for the signature drinks have got to be the Habito Mojito, Reggie's Revenge, the Scottish Professor or the, Brit the Bitter Barkey. I think for this afternoon, I'll be going with the Scottish Professor myself. A couple of cool Easter eggs to look for if you come into Jack Lindsay's. First of all, once you're inside, there's these shelves here. Look all the way at the top of the tallest one. You'll see that small golden statue. That is the idol from the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. That Indy delicately measures the sandbag to match the weight. You probably know that Indy hates snakes. And again, in that opening scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark, he finds a snake in Jock's plane, and Jock replies, that's just my pet snake, Reggie. I hate snakes, Jock! I hate them! So there's a couple nods to Reggie throughout the lounge. First of all, if you look up this way, you'll see a crate that's unfortunately been broken open that says Reggie's name on it, so I guess he's around here somewhere. Additionally, out on the porch, some of the seating is actually in a small boat, and it's called the Reggie. Over by the restroom, you'll find the Lost and Found, and if you take a look down at the bottom, you will see the medallion from Raiders of the Lost Ark that Marianne uh, grabs when she and Indy have a little kerfuffle at her bar. You might remember that the, uh, the main bad guy holds it when it's really hot and it burns it into his hand, and then she says, I'm coming with you, I'm your partner. There's that medallion. There's also several nods to the Adventures Club and SEA around here. SEA is the fictional society for explorers and uh, adventurers that both Indy and Jock are a part of. It stemmed from the Adventures Club back at Old Pleasure Island, which used to be here. And if you look at this passport and lots of found, it's for Samantha Sterling, who's one of the Adventures Club characters. Couple more behind the bar. I gotta save some of my stuff for another video if we do another secrets video. But uh, if you look up on the shelves there, you'll see a few things. One are the voodoo dolls of Indy Short Round and Steven Spiel Spielberg's Annoying Wife from the second one. And if you look on the third shelf, you'll see a lighter with a four-leaf clover on it. That is Indy's dad's from the third film. Dad! Oh, dad! Oh, dad! Oh! But perhaps my favorite of all the Easter eggs can be found here at the outdoor bar. If, if you look next to the mirror, you will see a dinosaur tooth in a case. That's actually because the real gentleman 
who played Doc Lindsay, Mr. Sorensen, he was actually a pilot. And he was used as a stunt pilot and to get crew back and forth on some of the films. Steven Spielberg took a liking to him. So flash forward many years after the original Indiana Jones movie and Jock Lindsay's cameo, Steven Spielberg are, and his crew are on the island of Hawaii filming a little movie called Jurassic Park. Unfortunately, a horrible storm was hitting and they were shutting down all of the airports. But Steven and the crew needed to get off the island so that they could get back to L.A. to safety so that they could continue working on the movie. So Steven called up Mr. Sorensen. He asked him if he could come save him and some of the crew off the island in Hawaii. So Jock Lindsay came and picked up Steven Spielberg and a bunch of other people and he took them back to safety. So if you were able to read that note inside the glass, which we can't get close enough to read, it would say, Dear Jock, thanks for getting us off the island. Signed, SS. I got the Scottish Professor, which is monkey shoulder blended malt scotch whiskey, Hendrix gin, some pear nectar, simple syrup, and fresh lemon juice. I actually always ask them to go a little bit lighter on the simple syrup just because I don't like super sweet drinks. I am having the Mayor's Reserve for my after dinner cocktail. It is Woodford Reserve bourbon, blackberry brandy, simple syrup, and lemon juice. I also asked to go a scooch lighter on that simple syrup so it's not too sweet, but it should be still a good after dinner cocktail. Thank all right, the Mayor's Reserve is pretty good. I was worried it'd be way too sweet, uh, and it's definitely sweeter than the cocktail I had earlier with bourbon, but it's not too sickly sweet. The blackberry brandy is just enough to curb that strict bourbon, and I'm glad she did cut back on the simple syrup because I do think it would be a little bit too sugary for me. Overall, though, it's a light, easy, breezy, refreshing bourbon cocktail. I don't usually think of bourbon cocktails as being, like, refreshing. You easy think of breezy. them as being, like, you know, bourbon, like, bourbon punch in the face, but this is nice and refreshing for this patio time. The Scottish Professor is also very light. You are able to taste the scotch and the gin together. The scotch is just smoky enough to let you know it's there, followed by some of the herbaceousness of the gin from the gin. This is a citrusy and refreshing after dinner beverage, a great palate cleanser, and you know the alcohol is in it, but it's not overpowered. This is just a very good sipping drink, a good porch drink. I, I think we have to do a charcuterie video. Yeah, absolutely. I saw one of those cargo loaded pretzels go by as we were walking out, and God, that thing is good with the beer cheese and the pickles and the pretzel. I mean, listen, I would not complain. Me neither. All right, final round. Alan's probably going to win because this is just Alan plans the day. You got this. That is very on brand for you to cheer me on when we are in competition. Shoot. Ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Finally. And in the coffee pick. round. Coffee round. It was yeah. meant to be. If there's one thing I can tell you where to go, it's coffee. Okay, so where would you like to go for coffee? Well, we could go to Everglaze, which is a coffee shop that also sells donuts. We could go to Starbucks. You can go to Starbucks anywhere. You can go to Starbucks in your layover in Kansas City. We're not going to Starbucks. We're going to my favorite coffee spot in Walt Disney World. We're going to Joffrey's and we're getting face coffee. While Joffrey's is not completely exclusive to Walt Disney World, it is pretty much synonymous with Disney coffee. Joffrey's has kiosks in all four of the theme parks and the water parks at the hotels. They also sell a bunch of their blends that they specifically make for certain resorts and certain restaurants. So those you can't get anywhere else. It'll be like the Kona Cafe blend or the Victorian Alberts blend or the California Grill blend. And those are custom made blends just for those signature locations. Is that Hocus Pocus coffee? Do we need this? Yes. I've never seen that one at Home Goods, but these ones you can usually get at Home Goods. The different seasonal blends, there's a pumpkin, a Happy Harvest, a mini apple pie. These ones you can normally find at Home Goods, but I've never seen Hocus Pocus, so I'm gonna snag it just to be safe. And as much as I love my pumpkin creme brulee cold brew this time of year, I can't help but get the face coffee, as I call it here at Joffrey. So latte art is only 50 cents to add to any beverage that it works on. And it works on the nitro cold brew, a hot cappuccino, or a hot latte. And again, for 50 cents, you can add either custom art that you upload to the app. It's called the Ripples app. Or there are several designs for you to choose from, including Mickey, Minnie. Right now, they have Mirabelle. They have some fall-themed ones, and they'll change seasonally. Um, you can, again, upload your own picture. It can be anything you want. It can't be anything trademarked. So, like, you can't upload a logo of 
you can't upload the Disney logo. You couldn't upload a professional sports team logo, um, from what I've been told, but you can upload a personal picture. And when they print it out, again, 50 cents, they print out pictures on there. So I chose a picture of me and Kronk, our pup, and Alan chose a picture of himself in his Halloween costume from being a little kid. It's kind of weird to drink our faces, but 50 cents, uh, this is pretty unique and a lot of fun, so. I'd recommend it. Why drink regular coffee when you could drink coffee with Mickey Mouse or your face on it? Thank you so much for joining us on the six course meal across Disney Springs. What was your favorite course? Coffee. Because I picked it. What about you? I love Taleo. Oh. I think Taleo is sort of an unsung hero of the eating options here in Disney Springs. It was great. There's so much to eat around Disney Springs. Let us know if you want us to do this again. We could do it in a park. We could do it at resorts. We can do it all over the place. Let us know what other ideas you have as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, everybody. It's been magical and very delicious. I'm a little snacky. Okay.